This time we decided to breathe life into an old iron that worked using coal. This is going to be a very long and interesting video. After all, we don't know much about it yet. It's going to be a very complicated restoration, much harder than anything we did before. Everything is covered in old rust and a spider has settled inside. We had already gone outside to get started and then we were in for another surprise we hadn't anticipated before. The iron was missing one of the tabs on the hinged lid. And something will have to be done about that. We move the spider outside and clean all of the trash off of the iron. Now let's remove the lid. One of them won't come out, so we're gonna have to cut it off. These horns on the lid of the iron need to be unscrewed. But that won't work anymore. We attach them, and with the help of a grinder, the inner part of the screw as well. But this proved to be insufficient, and we had to drill through them with a drill. And only now has it come loose from the lid. How are we going to screw it on after that? I have no clue. This also needs to be removed. Luckily, there's only a screw that we can simply unscrew. Just as I thought. We've spent hours on this. Spraying DWD did nothing. Heating it up with a gas torch didn't help either. I thought I tried with pliers, and it seemed to work at first, but it just made it worse. The bolt simply broke off. Well, what now? How do we unscrew the piece? We're just gonna cut it off with bolt cutters, and then we'll figure out what to do with it. From the beginning, things didn't seem to be going according to plan, especially when we found out that this one on the lid broke off but we're not giving up that easily. Then we started cleaning the rust off the lid with a spatula. It's going very well. We need to remove as much of the rust as possible mechanically before chemical treatment. We finish it off with a wire brush and the metal comes out. Unlike the eggs we restored earlier, there's a lot of detail and a lot more work to do. The same is true for the body of the iron. The first day is coming to an end and we are preparing all of the components for the mechanical treatment throughout the night. Specifically, we are pouring acetic acid solution over everything. This time, however, we decided to heat some of the vinegar over a fire to speed up the reaction. You probably know from chemistry class that the higher the temperature, the more active the reaction. We didn't have enough vinegar to cover all of the parts, so we used this candle to raise the acid level. The acid doesn't react with the wax, so it's fine. Because the vinegar is warm, it triggered a mega reaction, bubbles everywhere. I was worried the iron would completely dissolve overnight. But fortunately, it didn't. In the morning, it bubbled even more, but the iron was intact. We take the candle out and remove all the metal. In some places, the rust has completely peeled off. We decided to save time and immediately treated the surface with a stream of water under pressure, just like last time. Yes, that helped. After drying the parts, we immediately apply some VD to them to create a thin layer against oxidation. In fact, right before our eyes, the iron covered in a thin layer of rust. I put a wire brush in the drill and managed to get very clean finish on top of the iron. It's far from flat, but I think it just gives the iron a very antique look. And I don't think the original was very smooth either. Now it's time to address the missing parts of the iron. 
and that's where an old welder that's helped us many times comes in handy. First we want to weld this hinge. And with some difficulty, we've succeeded. Now it was the turn of the lid's fixing eye, and that's where the problems began. Not only did the metal not want to weld, but even the iron itself started to melt, and we made it a little worse. Turns out it wasn't really iron, it was cast iron, and it's extremely difficult to weld. We tried all sorts of things we found on the internet, like wrapping copper around electrode, but nothing worked. Fortunately, we were able to get special electrodes for cast iron at the hardware store, and with their help, we filled in the missing part. Which, after grinding, looked something like this. Not bad, drill a hole and everything will look great. By the way, during this manipulation, I left the mask near the lamp and it melted. I had to go to the store again, but this time I bought a mask that automatically darkens the viewing glass. Working in it will be much more comfortable. We went back to the broken screw in front of the iron and decided to drill it out a bit. Fill the hole with metal and make a new hole. The old vault was already too short, so we got a new one of the same diameter. The problem was that there was no thread in the drilled hole, so it couldn't be screwed in. So we bought this great threading kit. It looks very interesting and we can't wait to try it out. We will find one with a suitable diameter. We fix in the special handle, insert it into the hole and drip a little lubricant on it to make it slide. And that's how you try to cut a thread into a hole. A little twist back and forth and it seems to work. The bolt screws in without any problems. Cookie has been watching the work from the window all day long, probably getting things ready for ironing. Using the various wire nozzles on the drill, we continue to finish the iron. It was necessary to remove as much rust as possible, so that the iron would not rust in the future. Cleaning the handle was also not very easy, as it is curved and in some places very difficult to get to. Now it was time for the most important part of the iron the bottom part that slides over the clothes. There were a lot of dents in it, which we tried to smooth out with a sandpaper. However, the cast iron is very hard metal and very difficult to work with. For you, this looks like a few seconds, but in reality it was hours. And this is the result. It was quite satisfactory, to say the least. There are some small dents, but there are even more dents in modern irons in the form of steam holes. So now we're fine-tuning all the details to perfection, and the handle clearly shows that it's made in... Uh, I can't really tell which country it's from. Maybe you can read it. When I tried handling the iron, I couldn't even imagine how it should be handed. But when I saw the holes, I immediately knew what was missing. We need a rod. We measure the distance and cut a piece off with a saw. Work it in with abrasive sponge, then paint the wood with linseed oil. This will absorb into the spores of the wood to protect the handle from dirt and moisture. While the handle is drying, prepare the rivets for mounting all of the parts of the iron. Some we restored, and some were made from ordinary nails. The inside of the iron is treated with phosphoric acid to destroy any rust residue. And finally, our iron assembling kit is ready. Now everything needs to be properly and neatly joined together. We'll start with the lid and the handle. After inserting the rivets, we decided to re-weld them on the other side. With new electrodes and a new mask, that was no problem. Now we'll attach the cover using the custom pins I made from a nail. The 
special grooves make it easy to bend them in the right places and fix them in that position. Now insert a bracket to the cover and screw it on with a new screw. But unlike the old screw, it didn't fit at all. So we sanded the edges of a new screw, ground it down and used the drill to create a slot for the screwdriver. The result was the exact copy of the original screw. Great! We were left with a wooden handle. It screws in with self-tapping screws with the same head. And that's it! What a beauty! And how much work it took to clean it! It must have looked like this when someone's great-grandmother bought it 100 years ago. And of course, we can't finish this off without a test. Let's build a fire. When the wood is burnt, we take the coals and put them inside the iron. I think we need to puff them up a little with this motion. We go to the ironing board and get my favorite t-shirt. The iron is hot enough as it is. And we start ironing like with a regular iron. Wow, do you see that? It's perfect! Look how smooth it is! It's amazing! It's as good as a modern iron, really! And it only runs on three coals! And after work, you can open the lid of the iron and roast some sausages on it. As a bonus, we get a pocket mini grill. I wonder if anyone thought of frying meat on one a hundred years ago. Overall, I think it's pretty cool, and I will probably use this iron if the power runs out. Thanks to everyone who watched the video to the very end, because you are the ones who motivate us to do interesting things.